Welcome back everyone. Today I'm going to tell you about the G16e GTS motor found in this Toyota GR Yaris and other GR products and whether these engines are something you need to be worried about or if they're going to serve you well. Let's get into it. So the G16e GTS motor is found in the Toyota GR Yaris, the GR Corolla, and you might not know this, but it's also found as of 2024 in the Lexus LBX, which is kind of a pseudo crossover platform. The G16e GTS motor came out in 2020. It was a result of Akio Toyota and Toyota as a company saying that they didn't want to make boring cars anymore, right? And they'd been treading water with the Subaru BRZ GR86 cars. They'd been treading water with the Toyota Supra, which was a BMW product, but really they hadn't entered the game fully as a full Toyota product. And they felt that the best way to do that would be through motorsport. So they decided to go rallying. And at the time, the rules for rallying were that they needed a three cylinder motor and they needed to build a certain amount of cars for the road so that they could compete in events. And that's what they did. And they were meant to go rallying. They built this car and COVID happened and the rest is history. But Toyota continued anyways, and we got this GR Yaris and then the GR Corolla that was spun from it, built in the Motomachi factory, right where the Lexus LFA was built, right where the Lexus LC500 is built. So it's a very special motor. The likes of Volkswagen, BMW, the Volkswagen E888, they'll put that in everything, right? Anything that has a VW Audi badge, has two liters, that's probably got the EA888 motor. BMW B48, they'll put it in every BMW and Mini out there. And it's a modular engine, so the B38, B48, B58, even the diesel motors are all based on the same engine platform. Then you have Mercedes with the M133, M139. They've put that in the A45, the CLA45, the GLA45, the C43, the C63. They're all heavily shared motors. Toyota's G16e GTS motor, it's not the case. It's very much restricted to these cars. It's very much a rally motor. Because of that, I think it's quite special. Because of that, there are some downsides as well. Let's get into it. Fire issues. Now you guys know that the GR Corollas, they caught on fire in the USA. And the deal here is guys that there's only very few confirmed cases. Actually, theoretically, there's only two confirmed cases, right? It's really difficult to get the history of what was going on, what happened. From what I could see, the, the really heavily confirmed case, that person seems to have had previous accident history. Now, I'm not putting that person on blast. I hope you know he gets his new engine paid for, whatever the case is. But this is just what I can read uh, online. Then there's a few other cases that you know I just can't corroborate at all, right? I've, I've tried to understand what's going on, but the stats is not right. A lot of it's just forum jargon. So it's tough to really form an opinion. And for me, guys, uh, the way I understand warranties to work, Toyota's pretty good. If an engine blows up, it's not just Toyota, guys. I think any manufacturer is good. If an engine blows up, any manufacturer is going to be very interested in that. Their first reaction is not going to be to void your warranty. Their first reaction is going to be, can we get that engine and can we have a look at it, right? Can we have a look at it in the factory because we want to study it? In fact, when I've gone to warranty and I've noted some problems with my Toyota, um, they'll actually take the stats, right? They'll take the problems you're describing, they'll do some testing, and they'll say that we'll send this back to Japan or back to Toyota Corporation because we don't know too much about these cars, but we wanna make sure that you know things are working right. So I think Toyota or any manufacturer out there is gonna do that. So a lot of the rhetoric online is as if these cars are burning and they're on fire and Toyota saying, no, you know, we can't give you the warranty claim. We're not gonna do it. Uh, I think a lot of that is just rhetoric. You know, there's a boundary of what's an insurance claim and what's a car claim. I mean, if the insurer is going to pay you out, then there's really no need for the manufacturer to come to the party, right? Fire issues are a non-issue and there's thousands of these cars sold, right? Thousands across the world since 2020, these motors. And the fire issues are isolated to just the USA with the GR Corollas. I don't think it's a big issue. I think it's just, you know, most likely I think it's people probably not being super smart with their cars doing something and 
and or just an unfortunate event, a one-off event, I don't think it's worth worrying about. Number two issue, everyone tells you they've pulled out so much horsepower out of three cylinders, right? 300 horsepower almost out of three cylinder motor. And it's a very basic motor, guys. It's got a very aggressive tuning by Toyota. But let's be honest, it is a very basic motor. You've got a ball bearing turbo, you've got very basic tech, nothing like the Germans use, yet Toyota has cranked up the boost, right? Given it a beefy block and really pulled all the power they could pull out of this motor and they've done it and because of that people think it's going to blow up well first of all guys engineering and i'm an engineer engineering design is reliant on many factors uh, we can't have a reductive approach where we say you've got three cylinders hence your vehicle is less reliable right that's a very reductive approach everything has multiple factors playing into it uh, for example, bore and stroke of this motor is quite big. And in fact, if we can learn and understand that from someone, it's the Germans because when the Mercedes M133 motor came out and they put it in the A45 and CLA45 AMG cars, everyone thought, geez, man, those cars, they are tuned. <laughs> you know, they're tuned into the atmosphere. No way are these cars going to survive. And guess what, guys? Those cars are really good. And the main issue with those cars really is transmission and turbo related. Just the turbo for that car is no good and fails on you preemptively, which Mercedes-Benz upgraded. But the engine, and people have tuned it, right? People have tuned that engine and it's been fine. So with the GR Yaris, I think the three-cylinder motor is fine. Let's talk about Redline and whether this car can manage it, right? Now you hear those cases and there's a few on YouTube of the Nürburgring and there's engines that have actually blown up and I'm not gonna deny it, it is confirmed cases. It is the truth, right? and those engines have indeed blown up. Why have they blown up? Well guys, every engine has Achilles heels and this isn't even the GR Yaris's Achilles heel, right? But this does have an Achilles heel, which is it is very sensitive to its red line. The red line's at around 7250 and it's got a really nice rev limiter. If you know Toyota products, I'll actually, I'm pulling up, I'll bang off the red line to show you. But if you know Toyota products, they put a really nice fuel cutoff where your red line just starts banging off the off the limiter right whereas bmw and other german cars they kind of die out they cut it very aggressively toyota lets you kind of sit there and you know give you a little da 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 da, -da like a machine gun sort of thing if we can make it happen overall guys uh i think it's very safe in stock format you cannot miss shift the car though so you can't you can't be reaching out for fifth or sixth gear and put it into second. I would say this car is very sensitive to any sort of misshift, right? So I wouldn't even trust this car at 74, 7500 RPM, right? Do not go above the red line. And I think that's pretty much all you need to worry about. If your oil is at its max level or between min and max, if your coolant's good, if your service history is good, and if you're monitoring your temperatures, right, because you've got all the gauges, the oil pressure, the oil temp gauge, monitoring all of that, and you're not misshifting the car, you'll be good, guys. I do not think on a stock motor, you need to be worried about blowing up the engine. The next point, which is tuning. Should you be worried about blowing up your engine when tuning? In Australia, it's been tuned to double the horsepower on stock internals even, and at that stage, it's not the bottom end that becomes an issue, it's the head, right? It's the head studs, it's the valve springs. For me personally, I'm not a tuner, right? And I felt this way about my BMW, uh, the N55, which I always felt was not a tune-friendly motor. A lot of people didn't like that I said that, but that's just how I feel about it. And the B58 is, for example, the Volkswagen E888 is, for example, even the B48. Um, and what do I think about the GR Yaris? Well, guys, there's a lot of people that are making good power with the GR Yaris. Uh, tuned but I think it's just not a very tune friendly motor and the main issue is not the bottom end right I think this has a very strong bottom end Toyota has been known for good strong bottom ends much better than a lot of the German bottom ends it's the valve springs they used and it's the head and it's a lot of compromise they've had to make right it's not as if Toyota's just decided to use cheaper things when you tune it you start running into those issues the other thing as well is the engine management of this car you'll notice that it doesn't give you boost all the time right and it's a very common issue and especially in first gear it limits a lot of your boost and i think that's toyota nannies right so they've designed the car and put those limitations in place now if you tune it and take those limitations out who knows right you probably lose that toyota reliability and you know that's why we buy these cars right 
And Toyota's achieved that reliability by giving you less boost a lot of times, cutting off your power randomly. It's what they're doing to make sure the car lasts long. When you start tuning it, you take that away and I don't know where you end up, to be honest, because this car's not been out long enough for me to truly give you a conclusion. Another factor to tuning and why you don't need to do it on this car, guys, is the engine. As I said before, this motor is found only in a handful of models, right? Engine installs are about, I think, thirty-five to $40,000 in this car. It's a very expensive engine. The labor is high. I don't think it's worth taking that risk. BMW motors, you know, you can find them on Marketplace, right? Volkswagen motors, Marketplace, not this one. So it's not really worth it. Car also suffers if you try to add extra boost and lower RPM, that's also going to impact your car. So overall guys, I don't think you need to tune this motor. I think enjoy it for what it is, a Toyota product, right? If you're into tuning, there's so many other platforms that are way more enthusiast friendly. I think the best way to keep this car is to keep it stock. If you do, guys, I am pretty confident it is a good enough vehicle, right? Um, yes, the aftermarket engines are very expensive, so if in the rare event something happens, you will pay a big price for it. Um, but I think in the long term, uh, it should be better than most of the German motors. And you know, I'm not saying it, um, you know, out of dislike of German cars because I I feel like I have to say this every time. I love German cars. But Toyota has really nannied this car. You can feel it, the way it cuts off power, the way they've designed it. You know, it's not making a crazy amount of power anyways to begin with. So I think because of that ethos and the fact that it's not as good of a product as a German product, right? Because of all of that, I think you don't have to worry about reliability long-term. That's my personal opinion, guys. And I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, if you liked it, please do subscribe and I'll catch you next time. Thank you.